Can you please show me live right now what comes up about me when you search for my first and last name, if possible? Of course. So I'm going to share my screen. Just a moment. Okay, there we go. I'll be able to display it. Yeah, okay. Great. So here, I'm using a tool specialized in data leak analysis. As cybersecurity professionals, we have various tools at our disposal. We have platforms that allow us to analyze these data leaks. And so, yes, we do monitoring. Often, in marketing terms, this is called dark web monitoring. But in reality, it's mainly data leaks that we analyze. So all of this was coordinated with Christoph beforehand, of course. What we're showing you here tonight has been coordinated. We're in a controlled environment. I prefer to repeat it because it's important. And also, if anyone wants to come see me asking for information about X people after this broadcast, obviously I won't do it and I will refuse immediately. Now that we've said that, we're going to do a demonstration. We're going to put a field here with a very specific ID that matches one of your data leaks. So how does it work? Here, I did a search with an ID from a leak. When I run a search in there, I have under my feet about 9 billion data points, 9 billion rows, so about 9 billion people. So that's a lot of people. That's huge. And still, that's tiny compared to some platforms. We have other platforms with a lot more data, but let's just say it's a bit complicated to show you that tonight because when we search on those other platforms, we'll get all the data of other people coming up. So that's why we're showing you this one tonight. So indeed, here we are going to have a database called ANTES, National Agency for the Processing of Secure Documents, which is made for identity cards. There was a bit of a debate this summer about whether NTS had leaked or not. Yes, NTS says no. I have the data, so I see it and I say yes. So let me confirm for you that the information being displayed, just to clarify for those watching us tonight, these are very old pieces of information, so you won't be able to do anything with them. Don't worry. As uh, Sleek just mentioned earlier, everything was checked beforehand. However, what strikes me is that this is information I provided when renewing my ID card. So we're definitely dealing with a government file that comes from the aggregation of information from town halls, services, and the renewal of passports or ID cards. And so here we see only Sorodon. What is this town? Is it the town where you were born? Yes. Exactly. It's the town where you were born. So indeed. So you see nothing is missing from the picture. Can you tell us a little more about this leak that isn't really a leak after all? Can I say a bit more about this leak that isn't really a leak? Honestly, I can't really say much. What I do know is that indeed we saw the data come through. It's funny because we saw it come through a little before the scandal broke out this summer. We saw it come through in May or June around that time. And I think the news broke during the summer that there was a leak regarding the handling of the titles, but they denied it outright. They said, no, no, that's not true. It's just something unrelated. It's another leak that has nothing to do with us. Honestly, we don't believe it. We think that it's just PR. They did some PR about it to say that, no, it didn't come from them, but it's clear that it actually did come from them. So for me, there's no debate about it. Yes, we agree. In any case, Personally, I'm extremely surprised to see this information publicly available, basically to anyone. Because here, the important thing is to understand that in the end, you risk identity theft. Very clearly. Here, well, there's not much, but there's already enough for someone who would start cross-referencing. That is to say, with this information, beyond just searching by first and last name, knowing that I have a lot of namesakes, by refining with this information, like date and place of birth, you can go further and dig deeper with this search. That's it. So yes, you're right, Christoph. Now that we've got your last name, your first name, which we already had from your YouTube channel, etc. But now that we have your valid date of birth, we can actually search among all the data breaches of a person named Christoph Boutry, who was born on the 14th of April, 1986. And from there, we can potentially branch out to other data. So that's what we're going to do. So I'll enter the fields corresponding to Christophe Boutry, born in 1986 on the 14th of April. And from there, I'll come across even more breaches. I'm going to do some correlation. 
That is, starting from the data we found, we're going to try to widen the funnel of leaked data to try to find other data that belongs to you. So what else do we find? So ants, we've already seen that. What else do we find? We find a registration on Badoo, a dating site. Yes, that's right. Yes, so indeed, that's a site I must have signed up for nearly 20 years ago now, if we go back. For those who don't know it, it was indeed a dating site. Rest assured, I've been off the market for a long time. However, what we learn is that this data leak, for example, if I look at it, was integrated very recently. It was integrated very recently. And what's interesting to see, however, is that now in this data leak, we have an email address. And from this new piece of data, we can further expand the possibilities through correlation. And so we search using an email address, for example. So after that, it's a chain reaction. It's a chain reaction. You find an old email that belongs to me, which I use as a login for several years. And from that little piece, you can find even more leaks. All the leaks that are linked to that email address. And there, there could actually be a lot more. Absolutely. Okay. So next, we have another piece of data here. Archery. Yes, that's right. So you did archery, Christoph? I did archery for a few years in middle school and high school. Now, I'm 40 years old, so you can imagine that was a while ago. I might not really have the skills anymore. Well, it did come in handy later during my years of service. But still, it's really old. It's really, really old, actually. On the other hand, what's surprising is that in France, normally, and according to personal data processing law, when data is no longer supposed to be used, it should be deleted after five years. So it's fair to wonder how, more than 20 years later, this data is ending up in today's leaks. All this data is recent. So it's all sports data. So there's rugby, there's soccer, there's boxing. There are almost all sports. There's even ping pong, which leaked not very long ago. And with this data, we see that in the end, and the dot .com from quite a while ago. And in the end, they keep the data. And so the principle of GDPR, you can also start to wonder about it sometimes. So what strikes me is, well, this is old data. Indeed, I don't have a bow at home today. I don't practice this sport in the forest on weekends. On the other hand, you have a lot of information about me. That is to say, not only do you know that I practice this sport for a certain period, you also know. So from what I see, my skill level also appears in the end. We have the year of the license since it goes back to 2021. So here I read August 31st, 2001. And of course, all the information we already had. So it's important to understand that this allows someone to create a profile of a person. That is to say, for someone with bad intentions who would want to target someone, someone who would want to extort them, steal their identity, who would want to go a little further, push things a bit further, a preparatory phase. Well, by putting all this together, you have personal information that, for example, in the context of intelligence gathering, could be used to target me directly. That is to say, hey, weren't you registered at the Thurry Hercourt Sports Club in 2001? I remember I was around there at the time. Okay, here I'm giving you a kind of lame example on the spot, but... Social engineering. Exactly, social engineering. So that, that even in isolated cases, it can say a lot. And imagine this comprehensive database of information being available to the public. It also feeds intelligence services. Now that we've reviewed all of that information, we can actually do a search using your email address. Oh, since we found your email address. We're going to search using your email address. Let's see if we can find a bit more data. Indeed, we're going to get some data coming up from IntelX. IntelX's data has also leaked. That's what's funny. Even IntelX's data was scraped, meaning it was partially downloaded. It also leaked. So what you're telling me is that Intel X, a platform that aggregates data dumps, was also the target of a leak? It was the target. So I don't know if we can talk about Twitch, I think, but it was scraped. That is, people create bots that download the databases hosted by Intel X because IntelliX isn't sufficiently protected to secure its databases. Okay, so we end up with a duplication of the data, basically. That's it. So can we find anything else? Well, that's typical Twitter. It's not interesting. Yeah. What are we going to get? Duolingo? Have you signed up for Duolingo? 
I did sign up for Duolingo a few years ago, actually. I didn't go very far. I didn't make to learn English. To learn English, yeah, that's right. Improved. I think some people have noticed in my videos that I have a terrible accent, but well, there you go. That, that's pretty much all French people. Yeah, I think we're just too lazy to make a bit of an effort. But still, you do have some interesting information from what I can see. You have a username, the language I wanted to learn, your registration date, if I'm seeing correctly. Yeah, that's right. It's Chris Boyru, so I can display it differently too. But yes, absolutely. We'll see your username indeed. And once again, from the username, we could dig further to look for other leaked data where you might have used your username, but not your email. Or maybe you even have other email addresses, maybe more recent ones that we could have found if you use the same username, for example. So what else do we have? Badu, as we saw, Deezer, you created a Deezer account with the same username, by the way, which we find here. Exactly. Yes. So Deezer, which was leaked. I had a My Deezer account a few years ago which was leaked, I think, in 2019 or 2020. That affected more than 200 million people. It was a disaster. It's huge and it's gigantic. You had a Daily Motion account. A Daily Motion account, yeah. You signed up for Canva. I signed up for Canva, yeah. That's right, exactly. And what else do we have that's unfortunate or interesting? And you bought something from the Slip Francais. And I bought something from Le Slip Francais. Yeah, it's a good brand, by the way. There you go. You buy French products then. I buy French, yeah. That's good, you know. Well. So what do you think of this demonstration, knowing that you're someone who's particularly aware, especially, I think, of data security, given your former job and your experience on the internet? So that's already a lot of data, isn't it? That's quite a lot of data. Well, from what we've seen, you and I, when we prepared for this interview, well, this live session, overall, these are pieces of information that are a bit old. For the most part, we don't really have too much. Honestly, you can confirm this. We have nothing because I was very upfront with you. We didn't find anything recent about me because starting from a certain year, I got into the habit of using email aliases and entering false information when there wasn't the need for a specific invoice or order. So from that point on, I kind of protected myself a bit. Same thing, I changed my password very regularly. But for someone who doesn't care about that, I think you can confirm that I'm on the lower end of the spectrum, but you can find people where, well, it's a total free for all. Oh yes, we've already done searches on people who had more than 100 data breaches. I can give you a case from a client. I have a client who called us about a suspected cyber attack. And actually, this client, I'm not going to give too many details, but it's a company in the solar panel business, and they were supposed to get paid for a solar panel installation, basically. So they send the invoice, time goes by, and the money doesn't come, even though the installation was done. So they contact the client and say, please, could you pay us? We've already sent you a reminder, etc. And the client replies, but actually, I've already paid you. At that point, they don't understand. They don't understand what's going on. So they contact the client, they say, but which bank account did you pay to and all that? Can you show us where you made the payment? So then the client sends back the invoice they received. And actually what we see is that on this invoice, the IBAN is different from the one that was originally sent. So now the question arises, was the company hacked and did someone change the IBAN before sending it to the client? Or did it come from somewhere else? So we did what is called in cybersecurity a doubt clearance. So we intervened at the client's site. We inspected the servers. There were Linux and Windows systems. We inspected the machines. We couldn't find anything. And then at one point I said, could you give me your client's email address? So they gave me the client's email address. I entered it into a data leak analysis tool. And then it was a total festival. Over 100 leaks maybe, more than 100 breaches with passwords everywhere. So we finally understood what happened. Someone was actually monitoring their mailbox. So either automatically, we don't really know, of course, because we stopped right there as soon as we realized this. So either automatically or someone was actively monitoring the data leak and the person recreated an invoice, deleted the original email, made a new invoice and just changed the IBAN. And that's how he got tricked. So he sent the money, and unfortunately for him, he had to pay a second time, so to speak. So data leaks are really terrible. 
it's both impressive and terrifying when you talk about it. It was a very large sum as well because it was something industrial. So it was a very large amount. It's terrible. So I'm reading in the comments and someone liked the idea that you could do a search using the aliases of the email address you showed. That email address hasn't existed for a very long time. And when I talk about aliases, I'm not talking about aliases with a plus added. The first part of the email address, I'm talking about aliases simply by using a password manager. So these are completely different email addresses each time that are saved as usernames, as passwords. So it's impossible to find them again unless if you know them directly, exactly. If there was a single leak where it appeared, it would be impossible to correlate it afterwards to get more information. The tool I recommend to you, I personally use ProtonPass every day, quite simply. So don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to take a look. So wait, should I turn off the demo? Have we covered everything? Yes, we're absolutely good. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for sincerely showing us this tool and its capabilities because I think it really allows everyone to see just how big the problem is.